So excited to have John Denny here with me in studio at, at our Native Yoga Center in Juneau Beach. And John, thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to join me today. Um, what, what have you been up to lately? I feel like when we had this conversation organized, you got invited to go, was it to Texas to get involved in like a pickleball championship? <laughs> yeah, we set up our first time. I, I got invited to go to the world pickleball championships just as a spectator, yeah. but the largest pickleball tournament on the planet right now, 4,000 competitors. Wow. Saw the best of the best you know nice. yeah the number one girl in the world is only 16 years old wow. from del rey Unbelievable. wow oh my gosh do you play yourself a little bit just yeah. for fun yeah gotcha how about you that's cool uh just just a couple times i've gotten out there and tried it and uh it seems pretty fun the combo of tennis and ping pong it seems like yeah yeah that's cool and you know i'm really excited to have this chance to talk a little bit about a recent uh, development for you, which is you're now the minister at, of Unity of Jupiter. And um, can you talk a little bit about how you got that role and what you're doing with that role currently? Well, I um, I start on December 1st coming oh, nice. up here. So Come, all right. for about the last year, I have had a vision to get this position. So yeah. I've been a guest speaker about 25 times last year. Gotcha. And I've been a member of this church since we've moved here about 14 years ago from Hawaii. Nice. And uh, we've always had small churches, Barry and I. We had one in, you know, we had one in Colorado, we had one on Maui, and then we have this one. And I've just always been drawn to it. And I was served on the board for many years. And people enjoy my guest speaking, and one thing's led to another. So I'm nice. getting this next year to give it a try. Amazing. I don't want to assume that everybody knows what Unity Church is. I feel like it's universal, like everybody already knows that term. But how would you define Unity Church? <laughs> well, Barry, Barry says it's where the spiritual mutts go. The spiritual mutts. <laughs> <Yeah, yeah. laughs> but with those without... But unity is metaphysical Christianity. It's mm -hmm. um, what, what I what I like to call common sense or practical Christianity. Mm. In, in my opinion, if you know, if my religion or whatever it doesn't help me today with my, my my relationships, my business, the things going on in my life, well, what's the point in it? Yeah, yeah. So unity and the Fillmore's. Uh, really our practical Christianity. How do we apply it? How do we use affirmations in our life? How do we use denial in our life? How do we use thoughts? How do we use I love you instead of I hate you and understand mm -hmm. that it makes a difference inside? You know, yeah. those are yeah. those are very different feelings, yet they're just three words. But the feeling that goes along with them is huge. Nice. And, and you said you've had an opportunity to like offer 25 talks or is this like on a on the day of the service which i'm guessing is sunday yes, is that when you yes. is that when you do it so last year there were 52 services at the at the church and gotcha. um they were we were a board led ministry so we mm -hmm. had guest speakers each and every week mm. and finding good guest speakers is hard you know there's there're not a lot out there and so i ended up being sort of the yeah. anchor man so yeah. i out of yeah. the 52 weeks i spoke about 25 times oh yeah gotcha and and you know and i got better and better at it and People in the congregation kept saying, well, why aren't you it? Why don't they hire yeah. you? Yeah. And I'm like, well, you know, my hat's in the ring. That's all I can say. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I'm uh, not it, a unity uh, minister. I am a minister from the Academy of Spiritual Awakening, and I've done numerous courses, but I'm not a mm -hmm. unity minister. So I had to go under something called a special dispensation package, but it's all very common yeah. and it's worked yeah. out really well. That's cool. How do you formulate your speech and or talk that you're going to give? Like, what is your workflow process? If if you know, say, if I today's, I mean, if, let's just say it's it is Thursday, and say they say, okay, Sunday you're speaking. Can you within one day come up with a topic and formulate your speech, or does it take a process of a week or two to write it or oh, come hey. up with for, your formula? That's a great question. I believe it take for for a really good twenty minute sermon probably takes me fifteen to twenty hours mm. from conception to getting it on mm. paper to having it, you know, a logical presentation. Yeah. 
yeah. hopefully go through it once or twice. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's tremendously time consuming. But my process, so this weekend, we have Thanksgiving coming up. Yes. So a lot of times my theme will come from what's going on in the world. Yeah. So this week, my topic is called giving and receiving. Nice. So we're going to talk about giving thanks and uh, we you, get what we give. Yeah, good point. Good point. <laughs> uh, what was the last one that you did? What was the topic that you delivered on the last time you got a chance to speak in front of the group? The last topic was called at your command. And it talks about the universe responds to our belief and our commands, not our begging. So mm. we can go beg, please do this for me. But or, or we tell the universe, I am this. Thank you. And we affirm what we want. So it's it's affirmative prayer rather than petitionary prayer. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Does Unitarian also incorporate uh, different faiths as well? Because I heard you say like a, a metaphysical Christian based, and I uh, church, and I've I, I was under the impression that Unitarian had um, you know maybe someone from Islam or so, someone from so Judaism or it's some not Unitarian. Unitarian ah. is actually more ah. Christian. Ah. We are unity, ah. and unity, yes, it takes the best of all religions. So you'll find Buddhism uh -huh. uh, in, a, in a unity church. You'll mm -hmm. find Taoism. Mm -hmm. You'll find mm -hmm. many different religions. And what the film wars believed is there was good in all religions. There was the yeah. same yeah. one God, yeah. one presence yeah. found in all religions. Yeah. Yeah. Don't you do you think that's absolutely essential? when we watch uh, global conflict that we're viewing nowadays, that if we could somehow come to a common ground to uh, understand that we're all moving in the same direction, coming from the same place, headed in the same direction, do you think it's essential or? Oh, I absolutely think it's essential, uh, you know, and that's that idea of coming together mm -hmm. into one mind. Un yeah. Look at yeah. the United States, unity, yeah. all the things we aspire to is this yeah. coming together. It's what you teach people, yeah. you know, yeah. coming together. And I think it's it's so important right now. It's unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. the world is amazingly divided. Yeah. Good point. And you were involved in a type of meditation called the harmony exercise. Do I have that right? Well, here's a, here's a beautiful twist of fate. In 19, when I graduated college, I moved to California, graduated in 1985, went out to California and met a man named Carol Ryder. Mm -hmm. And he was the astrologer to the stars. He was Ron and Nancy's astrologer. Mm. He was the astrologer to all Hollywood's rich and famous. And yeah. my mother said, put on a tie and go to his house. Uh -huh. Well, within a few months, he was bringing us to his church. And it was called the Cairo Thesian Church of Faith, the mm -hmm. hand of God. And it turns out that, that the guy who created that church and the guy who created U Unity, Myrtle and Charles Fillmore, they were friends. Uh -huh. I've heard them write about each other. And gotcha. so it was incredible. And so the harmony exercise, which is a meditation he taught me in 1985. Mm. I've been doing it since 1985. Nice. There's a video on YouTube of the night I met him. Oh, wow. At his house. Gotcha. There I am saying happy birthday to someone I've never met. Didn't even know if it was a man or a woman. It was the craziest thing ever. Yeah. And it happens to be 40 years later. Oh, on, wow. On YouTube. Gotcha. It, you didn't you didn't put it out there. Someone else nope. recorded it and, and put it yep. out there and you were searching or they sent you the link and said, look, check this out. Or how did you find how did you bump into that? So in about in about 2014, 13, I decided this was my calling. Yeah. I, I've got to pursue this mission yeah. and <clears throat> and share this exercise and really get this word out there. So in 2015, I met this guy. Uh, Dan, coach Dan, he's a big football coach here in the area. And he had uh, seen the harmony exercise. And within a day, he'd done this research and he'd found some other people who knew about it. Yeah. And one thing led to another. And, um, and I just put it out there and I kept asking for signs. And one day after another, Todd, there was just another sign, mm -hmm. another sign. Have you heard mm -hmm. of this? Yeah. And the book had only been printed in 2014. 
that video that I'm talking about had been uploaded in 2011, uh, and the guy who uploaded it died in 2013. Oh wow! So gotcha. why did he even bother putting it up? There? Yeah, that's you no. Know? Yeah, and, and I and I and sometimes I'm like, it's like I feel like the universe yeah. was like, John, you need to have this on the internet. Yeah, this, you know that is really cool story. That is cool. <laughs> yeah, amazing. Can you give a little bit? Uh, well, you have two websites that everybody can check you out at and you have the harmony exercise.com and then you also have john dash denny.com so if if we want to follow you or visit you which website should i go to first well it depends what you're looking for if you're looking for a little coaching we go to the john denny website where i offer a uh, heart math and different ways of self-regulation so in about 2010, I became a heart math provider and I developed a, a program called Brainstorm Maui. Mm. And it was a little bit of a sort of um, life coaching program where you found calm in your in the you know in the eye of the storm. Mm. So you find calm in your yeah, life. Yeah. And it was really successful. And I was just like, wow, you know, I need to keep adding to this. And then the meditation added to that and just all these different things. So now I work with different athletes. I, I seem to, I definitely excel in individual sports where mm. there's, where, you know, tennis, golf, anywhere we have to take a little bit of time down. So you have time yeah. to think and yeah. get in your own way. Yeah. Anytime where there's yeah. self-sabotage potential yes. is where I kind of gotcha. give people the right tools. Nice. And so you've been able to work with some professional athletes then? Quite a few of them. Gotcha. Yeah. Nice. And and Olympics. I'm working with a a, a couple of sailors actually, and, and um, they were in the Japan Olympics, and now she's going to the Paris Olympics. Um, I work with some different professional golfers and on the LPGA, the PGA. Nice. Yeah, so it's great. What What do you find is one of the main stumbling blocks that athletes seem to? encounter i know obviously each person will have their own challenges probably based on their upbringing and things that maybe their their parents had taught them but is there something that you find is like a common thread yeah that you coach on there's a very common thread most people never learn how to control their temper and tension mm. and i think as you know most people never yeah. learn how to take a good breath yeah they yeah. don't understand conscious breathing. They don't understand what a good conscious breath does to your physiology. Mm. And then they don't understand what a proper thought does. They don't, yeah. they have, they have no reason to change thinking I hate you. Do I love you? Because they don't know the value in that. Yeah. So when yeah. they see that they can breathe better mm. and they see that they can think better, yeah. then the body actually responds better. Yeah. So we change, you know, I teach my clients to control their body, their physiology on multiple levels. But first of all, the respiratory system, yeah. learn how to take a breath. Yeah. Is that, you know, yeah. And then learn, and then that, that breath will control your cardiac system. So now you're in control of your respiratory and cardiac. Yeah. Well, think a good thought. Now you're controlling your your um, sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous systems, so you're actually changing your hormonal system, mm. and you're changing your nervous system, and you're changing your levels of tension. So if I can yes. control my tension and my temper, yeah, I'm going to perform better yeah. every time. Yeah, and if I can perform, and if I can, if I can control my temper and tension, and have the intention to be happy yeah. while I'm doing my yeah, thing, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna do better. Yeah. So, what do you think then? Say, like, classic example of John McEnroe, who was infamous for his or famous for his like losing his temper. Okay. And obviously, he was successful to some degree. Is there are there times that you actually might coach a player to consciously lose their temper, but more no, of a strategy? Okay. So, I, I, <laughs> that's funny. That, I that, that's he, another great question. He seems that's another successful. Great he seems successful. He was but, incredibly successful. But, but there was a temper there. And I okay. wonder, yeah. So, having a temper tantrum is a heck of a lot better than bottling it up and not. That's a good point. So, if you have no. Yeah different skill set if you don't yeah. have a plan in place yeah to start something else yeah so and i'm starting to get overcome with 
anger and tension. Yeah. I better let it out in a temper tantrum if I have no other release. Mm. Otherwise, it's just going to come yeah. out. It's, it's going to implode. Good point. So a temper tantrum is way better than nothing. Yeah. However, a temper tantrum is only going to get you so far mm. because tension you know, you, you can you can you can perform pretty well, but there's a level to perform at your peak, your best, your best, your best. It has to be like yoga. Mm. There has to be a complete flow mm. into beyond that. Mm. You know, you have to go to the yeah. next level and, and yeah. start playing what I yeah. call the spiritual level, yeah. where I'm playing for the love of the game. I'm playing for the the love of the moment. Yeah. So I'll tell you a story. Yeah, I'm please. down. I, I learned this. <laughs> I'm going to a naturopathic doctor out on Maui. Uh -huh. And he's giving, Barry and I were both going, and he's giving me all these tests, yeah. vega tests, muscle tests, this and that, right? So after about two weeks of testing, he's like, you know, bro, you're lucky you live here on Maui because according to my tests, you don't handle stress well. <laughs> and I'm like, no, I don't. Uh -huh. I go, my back goes out, my uh -huh. neck goes out, I get uh -huh. cold sores, uh -huh. I've had sciatica. I go, uh -huh. I do not handle stress well. Yeah. He goes, well, next time you come here, I want you to learn about this freeze framer machine. Now, this is 1999. HeartMath had just released its first heart rate variability devices, like serial ports and stuff like that. So yes. I come the next time, and he hooks me up to this, machine with my finger or whatever and yeah. i light up in a hundred percent sympathetic activity and he's showing me how that mm -hmm. is and he, and he turns it off and he says now i want you to uh i want you to do your meditation my meditation is very cerebral i'm thinking a lot but it changed it changed it quite a bit and, he, and then you turn it off again he goes okay now i want you to sit here and i want you to do some heart-centered breathing i just want you to focus on your heart mm -hmm. I want you to take some nice full breaths and I want you to just think of something that makes you happy. Yeah, so all yeah. I did was that and I opened up my eyes and now it's 100% green, all these beautiful waves. Yes. And I look at him and I'm like, uh, I'm uh, like, okay, where's uh -huh. the make him a believer button? Because uh -huh. there's no way yeah. in 15 minutes you just yeah. taught me how to do this. No yeah. way. Yeah. And he goes, yes, I did. Yeah. And that day really changed my understanding of conscious control mm. of our own physiology yeah. to the point that I was like, oh my God, you know, why doesn't everybody understand this? And that, that led into, you know, that led into understanding all the powers of thought and all the stuff that goes along with yeah. it. Yeah. But, you know, and I imagine, I mean, I did, as a matter of fact, I had done yoga for about two years and, and, and Laird took me. So I felt like it was an hour long exercise class, right? And you were just, it was an hour long push up class. There was nothing to do with yoga. I'd hear the lady saying something about breath, but there was no yoga. <laughs> this is Laird Hamilton. Yeah. The, okay, gotcha. Oh, and he yep. took us to all to our first yoga classes. Uh huh. Uh huh. And uh, so then, then, but I'd hear her move with the breath, move with the breath. And I never, just, just never got it. And then I bought my first heart math machine. Yeah. And I'm taking my breath in and the line's going up and up and up. And then I take my breath all the way out and the line's coming down and down and down and down. And I take my next breath in and it goes up and up and up. And, and I'm watching it go across the screen. I'm like, that's a yoga move. Mm. I go, mm. if I was moving on the up breath mm. and I was mm -hmm. moving on the down breath, mm. that would be yeah you know, it's, it's yeah that would be the point. first thing in a sun salutation good point good and point I'm like, and then i did it and then it, it all came to me like i understood yeah. what moving with the breath meant and, and then i went to a yoga class and the whole class i was able to do it and the next class is a little bit harder but i just remember i was like oh that's what they meant yeah and, and, yeah. and if you can't move yeah. with the breath yeah go to child's pose but i never yeah. understood that because yeah. we were all just that's a great point yeah it was I, I remember the time that I, when you had your office in Jupiter and I got a chance to go to your studio and you uh, let me, that? yeah, you got me on that. And uh, that was a really amazing experience because <clears throat> like, like you said, like you, you might think to yourself, okay, I know that this breathing is supposed to be good for me. And so you're doing it while you're in there. But when, when I could see that the heart really does change dramatically very quickly just soon as you slow it all down or just take a little bit deeper breathing so when i got the visual of that a similar type of experience where i was like 
oh, well, that makes sense. Like now when I'm in the room, I'm this is actually working. This is actually doing what I'm, I thought it was, but when I could see it, it just proved it. I can't tell you how many yoga, yoga instructors or yoga practitioners I've mm. had over the years. And, and, and I'll put, I'm like, just do your Anjaya breath. I'm not even going to coach you. I'm, I'm going to imagine you're a good breather yeah. already since yeah. you're a yogi. And they'll do their Anjaya breath and yeah. they'll get into those beautiful waves and they'll yeah. see their heart start to respond. Yeah. And they're yeah. just like, oh my God, I yeah. knew it did something, yeah. but I yeah. wasn't sure what. Yeah. yeah. And then yeah. they see their heart yeah. in real time responding yeah. to the skills we're learning yeah. about focusing their mind thinking a happy thought, mm. breathing correctly, see it immediately. The other amazing thing, Todd, is uh, you know, we will go work with teams. So Allie used to hook the girls up at the volleyball teams. And that's your I, daughter. I, You're at yeah, your daughter. My daughter. And she's a pro volleyball yeah, player. Yeah. Yeah. Pro volleyball player coach. and coach. Yeah. And uh so I, I do big groups and we'd hook the girl up and get her into the nice waves and get her into coherence. And then I asked the girls, I said, listen, um, why don't I want you to, what I want you to do now is I want you to think about something that's bothering you. Mm. And I watched the girl go from basically sitting in front of a whole class of people, about 75 beats a minute. Mm. And, and she just changed her thinking. She didn't move a muscle and her heart rate went from 75 to 130. Mm. Sitting just like in a chair just like with this, the thought. just yeah. thinking yeah. about something that yeah. was upsetting her. Yeah. And her heart rate went up 50 beats a minute. Yeah. I was sitting there. Yeah. It went right off the screen. Yeah. And I'm just like, yeah, uh, it amazed yeah. me. Yeah. And of course, uh, I never ask what people are thinking, uh -huh. but I'm going to be like, okay, now uh -huh. what we want to do is we want to replace that thought because that thought is not mm. whether it's exciting or whether it's depressing or whether it's anxious producing it's not good for you yeah no matter yeah. how you cut it yeah so you got to be able to control that yeah so what do we do we replace it mm. i refocus yeah change the breath think a different thought and suddenly yeah. the whole and and you're just watching the computer yeah. and the whole physiology yeah. changes yeah. back down you're yeah like, oh. interesting do you think that like could you put thoughts into two categories ones that cause your heart to your nervous system to jack up and those that cause them to drop down or their variability is your variability in that like is there a strategy for the replacement thought there <laughs> the, the replacement oh. of the thought strategy is there is there like a can you can you share a little of that okay so my, my mentor described it as the doctrine of replacement doctrine. you're gonna know you're gonna yeah. know when you're going along in life and the thought comes in you know, so and so did this to me, or, or the thought, the 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 stress producing thought comes in, yeah. And you're like, okay, here it is, yeah, right. So what we want to do is right then, um, heart math calls it the freeze frame technique. Mm. So I'm gonna be like, okay, I need mm. to take a time out. I'm mm. thinking about Jim, you know, yeah. and I need to take a time out. So I'm gonna I'm gonna take a breath. Now the first part of the technique is to take my focus away from Jim and back to myself, yeah. I want peace instead mm. of this. Mm. Okay. Yeah. So I bring my focus and attention, literally, what I'm where my mind is focused, I bring it back to myself, back to my heart. Now my my mind and my heart are connected. I'm back within my body. Okay. So I'm taking a time out from the world. Yes. And this is the first step because I want to refocus my mind. Now there's stress in my body. Yeah. I'm I'm I'm, I'm mad about this happening so i need to breathe so yeah. the second step is taking that nice breath mm. that's called a heart breath and that removes the tension from the body now i can bring my tension level back down yeah and then the third thing i want to do is allow a new thought to come up about him yes. i'm sorry he did mm. that to me mm. it's all gonna work out please yeah. forgive me for getting upset about this yes. whatever so there's yes. a, a systematic way to first we it's almost like denying the thought okay yeah. i'm not gonna let that come yeah and then replacing it got it but at the same time i'm taking care of the physiology along the way that makes sense mm, versus incredible. just a random like okay change the thought change the thought think something positive what that doesn't work. because then you're still in that agitated state so it makes sense that you would try to first do the breath 
bring the attention on herself or on the heart mm -hmm. and then change the thought change the thought so heart heart yeah. focus yeah. heart breathing heart yeah. feeling or heart thinking we call nice. it nice nice and you know when you said are there two categories of thoughts yeah to keep it real simple yeah love and hate i love yeah. you yeah. i hate you or yeah. and and you feel yeah. the difference and and, yeah. and most stuff will go into the categories so we yeah. have the seven deadly sins you know yeah. Yeah. lust anger worry fear all the different ones that we have there over here we have the fruit of the spirit we have love kindness peace gentleness you know yes and, and so they're all right there and it's just a very simple list yeah. one is healthy yeah one is not great point do you ever come across a coaching situation where if i know i have a choice like if, i guess there comes a time where i need to acknowledge or like come into full appreciation that i i can choose love i can choose hate and that it is a conscious choice do you find sometimes you you see people and or people that you're coaching and or maybe yourself or other people that just refuse to change but still come to you saying i want help i want to i want help i want help but i refuse to change so <laughs> I, I i had i had one i had one i had one golfer come in my office and over his career he went over 12 million dollars on the on tour but he yeah. never won ever and he said you, you know won. i like playing yeah. ang I, I, yeah. goes, I like playing angry mm. i'm like well interesting how come you never won you know yeah <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> do, I, I mean, do i need to ask that question yeah yeah, yeah. No. And, and so how often mm. if you're watching a sport does the, the does the guy in the bad mood win yeah do you ever see it not usually no. the person who wins usually seems pretty controlled and focused and maybe even smiling after he wins the putt or makes the birdie or whatever he's going for yeah or absolutely yeah yeah and so the, that's interesting the, the happy yeah. you're always yeah. going to see very seldom yeah. we see the guy having yeah. the temper tantrum win the yeah. tournament yeah. okay yeah it's always the guy who keeps calm the whole time yeah and then uh you know people ask me i was like well how come people you know in, in the one hit wonders how can somebody mm. win one time and mm. never come back and i'm like mm. that's the easiest to explain mm. of all mm. Yeah. he played four days yeah. without hitting yeah. a bad shot yeah so yeah. If, if i were to start on thursday yeah and go all the way through to sunday and never yeah. hit a bad shot yeah or not one that was bad enough to get me in a bad mood yeah i can I suddenly i'm like wow that was yeah. amazing yeah however the next week mm. he hits one in the water on the fourth hole and suddenly mm. boom mm. he can't control his temper yeah. so he's the, yeah. the the chances of him playing four perfect days again yeah yeah good point you know if i pick a game if i just think like pickleball and if i and, and uh, if we played pickleball in a room where there's no wind then the environment is relatively controlled and i uh, i could blame myself i guess for making a mistake on a shot when you take something like a sport you've been able to surf in big waves in hawaii mm -hmm. and the oceanic environment is not controlled at all right that's something that's free flowing moving we can't control that and you're in more of a state of flow it seems to me do you um have you had a moment in surfing where or paddling or uh, in the ocean where you what kind of thoughts have you had in the past in relation to feeling like you're fighting against it or working against nature in the ocean versus when you get into a flow state that then you could change your mind. I mean, cause I, one thing I find about the ocean is so amazing is that because of the constant change and the constant flux, I feel like I have to almost surrender a little more. Mm -hmm. And when I'm like in a controlled environment where I can, I uh, hit the ball and I can't really blame anyone, but, but, myself for making the mistake but in the ocean i feel like i didn't even know that was coming i just tried the best i could and it threw me off or it dumped me or i i don't know I've, i mean with surfing i've always um i love it for that that i'm at the mercy of this powerful energy and i just hope that maybe i'll be lucky enough to make it you know <laughs> like right. yeah what, what sort of what kind of experiences have you had um in relation to your oceanic adventures Oh my God. I mean, I can't even begin to put them all down, but I I'd, I'd have to say 
getting to go surfing with true ocean masters, you know, spending time in the water with Kelly Slater, with Laird Hamilton, with Dave Kalama, with Robbie Nash, with these real heroes of the water, what they all have in common, none of them are ever in a hurry, mm. ever. And when you learn a sport, Mm. You're, I'm gonna go, rah, 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 mm. and you have this. Mm. I got to get out there and catch one. Yeah, and it's almost like the harder you try, yeah. the worse you do. Yeah, and I think you must find that yeah. in yoga practice yeah. also. Absolutely, the harder people try, it's yeah. like stop trying so hard. It'll be a lot easier. You yeah. know. Yeah. Good point. And suddenly, if you start to try a little bit easier, <laughs> yeah. suddenly go a little further. And so we, we, um, you know, being with them and watching them, but there were many times where I was trying too hard and, you know, you pay the price. I mean, yeah. I, I went over the falls at Jaws. I went, you know, I, I paid yeah. some heavy prices out there. Was this because, when there were flotation devices? I'm thinking when you were in Maui surfing Jaws, this is pre-flotation or? I had flotation. You had flotation? Actually, when I usually, I usually put two on, uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> but yeah. those guys didn't. But I was out there, we were out there from that whole non-flotation through flotation yeah people don't understand flotation because it's it's not first of all you're not swimming down under these waves anyway yeah you know so you, yeah. you, you you're not it's not like having no flotation is going to help you much yeah. over flotation because when yeah. that thing takes you yeah i don't care how what you have on it's sending you to the bottom yeah and, and uh so but nowadays they have these flotation vests that actually you pull a you pull a rip cord and you turn it into a beach ball yeah. you know shooting yeah. up to the surface gotcha so that's made the sport tremendously more doable yeah you know? yeah and, and, yeah uh, were but, you were you being towed in or paddling or both at jaws always towed i yeah. never paddled yeah I, we yeah. went out we went out just before i left maui laird was starting to stand up paddle out there mm. so we went out on some sessions and watched him stand up paddle yeah i saw a few sessions of people lie down paddling yeah and now over the years it's become more paddlers than tow teams out there gotcha until it gets huge yeah um when you watch what's going on in portugal at nazare what do you think? Crazy, or would you go out there? <laughs> I'd go to watch. I'd never try I'd that one. The uh, me too. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty amazing. That that um, did you watch that hundred foot? I wave? did. You know, Barry was like, "You got to watch it," and I was like, "Oh, it's on my queue. It's on my queue." And I finally did it, and I was like, "You're right, Barry. That thing is that show is." Did you so know what happened good. to her last week? No. She, well, she had to move her mother from an from an assisted living facility in California, New Jersey. Uh huh. She's coming back to Florida and New Jersey, and she walks by. There's Garrett McNamara in the airport, and no she's way. like, "Hey, Garrett!" Oh, no and way! They, they chatted, and she's nice. like, "Yeah, we loved it." And, That's cool. And he right, she recognizes his wife. We'd met him a couple of times at trade shows and things yeah. like that. So. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. You mentioned that there was a, some synchronicity with the amount of time that you've been practicing the harmony exercise on a daily basis and the coordination of you starting on December in December as the minister of unity of Jupiter. Can you explain a little bit about that? So in night, I was 23 years old in 1985 when I met that man, Carol Ryder. I became, and I learned a meditation, which I have been doing my whole life a 12 minute meditation. Mm. And Barry was the first girl who learned it with me. Mm. And I married her. I even knew in my head, I was going to marry the first girl that learns this. Yeah. And so <laughs> she and I have had this as yeah. our foundation of our marriage. Yeah. And we'll be married 29 years on November 26th. So nice. next, this next Sunday. Yeah. Uh, it's a solid 29, 29 years. Yeah. And I, <laughs> I love her more than the day I met her. And yeah. so, but we always had this, this meditation together. So I always knew a family that prays together stays together. So no matter what, we spend about 10 minutes, 12 minutes a day, only one of us talking, mm -hmm. because only one person talks when you do the harmony. So for 10 minutes, no one's arguing in our house, right? So mm -hmm. only one person's talking. I used to laugh well, about that. Can you that. explain that? You mean one person's talking, leading the other person lead, through lead, the exercise? Yes. So it's not, is it possible to do the harmony exercise without being in the company of someone else? Sure. Yeah. You just would do it through, you learn the, you learn the, the meditation and, but in the one that you guys do, so that's how you decided to do it. Or is that part of the instruction as well? No, Carol, Carol taught it to me in this uh -huh. exact format. Uh -huh. I, you know, he invited uh -huh. us to his house. Yeah. We all sat down, oh, cool. did the harmony exercise. Yeah. He led it. Yeah. And 
it starts with physical relaxation. So the first exercise is just relaxing the body. So I'd yeah. say, okay, take a breath and relax the forehead and the upper back of the head. Relax the face and we'd relax yeah. the whole body yeah. down to the bottom. Yeah. So easy to lead that. And then yeah. the next one yeah. is relaxing the mind. But so for 12 minutes, I'm talking. Yeah. And for 12 minutes, you and I are thinking the exact same thoughts mm. for this 12 minute pack mm. period. Mm. Mm. And then we'll go back to our daily life, but yeah. nothing ever built up, right? So, and then when our children came, they'd sit there and we'd all, the four of us would do it together. Yeah. So yeah. every morning we'd start out and the yeah. four of us would have this little prayer. Yeah. And then we moved to Florida and life happened. And then, uh, and then I, like I told you around 2015, I was just like, you know, this is my calling. And in, in, to backtrack a little bit, in 1987, I got my master's degree in psychology from Pepperdine University. Mm. And when I was graduating, they asked, what, during graduation, they said, what is your impossible dream? And mm. I said, my impossible dream would be to be a minister. Mm. Wow. And yeah. now, 40 yeah. years later, yeah. here I am becoming a minister. Wow. Wow. And, you know, we, by the most unlikely turn of events, we don't know how mm. the world's going to... Yeah, good Work point. Work it all out. Good point. You had, had, and so at some point you got really focused on, I'm going to do this exercise every single day without missing a single day because you made mention of holding that sort of concentration for the past seven years now. So on, I was a little frustrated in December 2016 or, or even November and my friend, Coach Dan, said, listen, John, if you want to really prove this to yourself, you need to do it every day. And what I'm going to do mm. is on December 1st, I'll call you and we'll do it on the phone. We'll, put, we'll do the speaker phone. Yeah, yeah. So December 1st, we turned on the speaker phone and he was at his house. I was at mine and I led, led him in the harmony. Uh -huh. The next day, we did it again. The next yeah. day, he had a friend over and I led them. Uh -huh. And then we did it and then we, we'd meet up and we'd do it. So for that first month, we did it. And then at the end of December, 2016, I learned about Facebook live yep. and he, and, and, and we thought, do you think I can do it for a whole year live on Facebook? So yeah. a 12 minute meditation yeah. live on Facebook yeah. from different locations. Yeah. And I did it nice. 365 days. Barry nice. would join me and, yeah. and we did it. And it, it was I mean, you know, you, there were coughs and dog barking and horns going off. It wasn't <laughs> the cleanest product, uh -huh. but it got us going. Yeah. And it got her yeah. her dream job. It got me to understand the value of daily practice more than anything I ever could have imagined. Mm. And our whole, everything changed. Mm. That in mm. 2017, our entire, and our life was already great, but it yeah. went to unbelievable. I nice. went from 260 to 215 pounds without ever going on a diet, without mm. ever starting an exercise program. Alcohol just left my life. I yeah. never quit drinking, but I don't drink alcohol yeah. anymore. But I yeah. never quit. Yeah. People are like, when yeah. you quit drinking? I'm like, uh -huh. I didn't. I swear uh -huh. to God, I never uh -huh. quit. That's my level of health yeah. got more important yeah. than my level of alcohol. Yeah. That's all there yeah. was to it. Yeah. And, uh, That's and so a good all point. these things happen, man. And then... <laughs> Then, That's awesome. Then in uh, Valentine's Day 2018, Barry and I renewed our vows at Unity in the labyrinth. And um, what's the labyrinth? That's just a room there, it's, or oh, it's this beautiful walking okay. meditation that we built there. Nice. That's a whole another incredible story. That's here in Jupiter. Yeah, right. Yeah. In the, right, right, it's right behind Walmart. It's on yeah Bush Road. Gotcha. There. Gotcha. And there's a, a beautiful labyrinth. You know, it, it just it, state of the art labyrinth. You should go walk it one I'll day. I'll check it amazing. out. Yeah, and um, and, yeah, and we we renewed our vows, and then and then that, that year was the that happened. February fourteenth, two thousand eighteen, was the first day of Lent, and Lent mm. is like some Catholic thing for forty days. Yeah, and we well, neither of us are Catholic, okay? But yeah. it's always fun yeah. to do something, you know. And she goes, <laughs> "Why don't we give up wine for Lent?" Yeah, I was like, "All right." So uh -huh. hard alcohol had left me uh -huh. and then we give up wine for Lent. And at the end of Lent, she's like, I'm going to get some wine. I'm like, I don't want any, mm. you know, and I've never, mm -hmm. and I've never touched it since. So I'm nice. six years alcohol free, seven years daily meditating. Yeah. Yeah. And then 
seven years to the day will be December 1st, 2023. Oh, wow. And that'll be the day my contract with Unity of Jupiter starts. Interesting. So just talking about divine mm. synchronicities, mm. you know, mm. and, and how the universe yeah. lines things up that you could never imagine. And I'm sure you, I know that Great you point. and Tamara have had the same experience a thousand times. You know, I'm nothing special. You just yeah, have to. I hear you. I hear you. What advice would you give somebody that's embarking on a mission like you took to say, I'm going to do this for one year, no matter what, no matter if it's raining, sunny, cold, I'm tired, I'm hungry, I'm traveling. The kids, I didn't expect. I had to pick them up. I was going to do it this time. The kid, you know what I mean? Like the million and one excuses oh, yeah. that come in. Did what, what, you have one or two or three tips of advice would you give somebody that's thinking about taking on like a one year challenge of doing the same thing every day? There has to be a passion. There has to be, it's not something that you're being told you have to do from some outside person. Like you can't tell them, Oh, you have to do yoga for a year and Oh, I'm going to do it. Cause Todd told me to, or I'm going to do the harmony exercise. Cause John told me to, eh, mm -hmm. you know, fail, fail, fail. But when it comes from the inside, from that, yeah. Yeah. ikigai or whatever yeah. the japanese yeah. call it that inner purpose <laughs> yeah. then you will find it and you'll do it you, yeah. it won't matter it's like yeah. delivering the mail yeah. i don't care yeah. i'm delivering the mail you know yeah. and yeah. and it's that kind of inner yeah. drive like yeah. nothing could stop me yeah. people say why don't you take a few mm -hmm. days off i'm like mm -hmm. are you out of your mind mm -hmm. do you see where i was yeah. and where i am and why yeah. would i ever even yeah. Uh, you know yeah good point good I, point i can't imagine yeah and I, now you know those first three years I, the first year was Facebook Live, so I recorded it every day. Mm -hmm. Second year, I recorded it every day. Third year, I recorded it. Fourth year, I recorded it. And then fifth year, I was like, you know, I have <laughs> such nice ones now. If yeah. it's raining, uh -huh. I'm not going to uh -huh. go kill uh -huh. myself to uh -huh. make a new one today. Uh -huh. I'll go do the harmony, yeah. which is actually... Yeah. Which has actually, in, in a way, been even a, a deeper experience because now I've gotten back a little bit to doing it more for myself on those days. Yeah. Uh, and, yeah and so I yeah. can deviate a little bit. Like yeah. this morning, it was like 100 mile an hour winds. That was wild, wasn't so, it? So I, when I'm praying, I'm like, okay, well, and I, I, I'm, uh, I'm not doing it. So, okay, so Todd and I are good. The Todd cast is going to go perfect today, you know, and I put that in right action. I can do it out loud because I'm not yeah, yeah. recording it. Wasn't that amazing though? When I got up this morning to walk the dog where I didn't even hear anything all night long, I opened the front door, it's dark out. And I was like, wait a minute, this wind, this is not a 20 mile an hour. This is not even a 30 mile an hour. This is, this is even like a 40 or 50 mile an hour wind. It was howling. It was, it was screaming all the trash in our neighborhood. Just the, everyone's can flipped over every cycle bin. There was trash littered everywhere. Trees had been blown down. And I'm like, there was no like no one was like, usually every time there's like the potential for even like a little bit of rain you're getting alerts on your phone saying flash flood warning or you know we've tornado had, we've warning had hurricanes or, that didn't give us what they gave us yeah, last night i know that was so crazy I mean, yeah that, we've had hurricanes that didn't even knock over our chairs we woke up this morning all the chairs were in the pool everything, everything was everywhere I, I was like oh my yeah gosh. yeah it had an incredible energy to it like yep. i love the wind i know some people will say when the weather's like that they, they feel a little Agitated, anxious. anxious, but something about the wind. I just love it. When, oh and, yeah. And that, that's another thing. People, you know, they go through life saying things make them feel a certain way, which, mm -hmm. which they do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. However, if you have no way to change the way you feel, mm -hmm. then yes, everything is going to make yep. you feel a certain way. Yep. But I want to feel a certain way. I want to feel peaceful yeah. i want to feel yeah. i don't want to feel anxious i hate that feeling of anxiety yeah. you can't breathe and you know yeah. that feeling and you're yes. just like you can't you don't yes. understand what's going on yes i can't take that yeah. so i hear you we want to be practicing so that doesn't happen good point good point if somebody would like to do the harmony exercise with your watch one of your videos the best website to go to for that is well, you, the the harmony one the harm the harmony exercise.com the harmony exercise.com has my online course called the elements and that's on that's for free and you can go through a, a nine uh nine or ten videos that breaks down each and every aspect of the harmony 
If you go on my YouTube, the Harmony Exercise YouTube page, there's many free harmonies. If you want my daily harmony, the one I made yesterday for today, then that's a subscription. But there's a lot. I have over there's over a thousand free harmony exercises on the internet right now. Uh, the Harmony Exercise Facebook page has about 400 of them. Yeah. The Harmony Exercise YouTube page has about 200 of them. So there's many free ones, but my daily journey one, like the current one, yeah. there's a small charge for. But That's you cool. can always find a free one. So you never have. Nice. Uh, you know. That's cool, John. I appreciate that. I'll have all those links in the description so people can just like click and find oh, it super cool. easy. They don't have to search. Yeah. Hey, yeah, we, man. Um, well, you know, I'm so happy to have this opportunity to, to hear about, I've had a chance to meet you over the years and talk with you over the years, but I was really looking forward to this as well today. I, when I woke up, I, I told Tamara, I, I was saying, I got John coming into the studio. I, I've been thinking about inviting you on for so long. So I'm so happy we finally got this to work. Oh, um, me too. Thank you so much for, for coming in. It's divine timing, you know, <sighs> yeah, it was, uh, it, it's perfect now that I have that. You know that contract happened Wednesday. Nice. So now that's I can nice. say that one. Nice. Yeah. Full confidence now. What is your when you visualize the your future in this role? What do you hope to achieve? I, I hope to achieve changing individuals one at a time that become, you know, basically light bearers, basically people who want to live this life in a happy, harmonious way and help other people do so mm. and really just make themselves better. You know, the, the reason why I do this stuff is really to make myself better. If I can do that to a point where it helps others, that's great. Yes. And, and so that that's my main view. You know, I, I think we're yeah. living in a world right now, which is it's it's tough and, and devices don't make it any easier because they keep us in the past. Yeah. Every time we pick up yeah. a telephone, we're going, we're, going into the past, you know, yeah. bringing us out of this present moment. Yeah. So I think it's an important thing. And uh, like like your mission, yours and Tamara's mission, and, and keeping people healthy physically, healthily, healthy mentally, mm. healthy spiritually, healthy emotionally mm. is the most important thing we can do right I now. I agree. And, I agree. You know, I'm 61, so I don't know how much more time I have left, so I may as well do it right now. <laughs> Do you find that that's what happens the older we get, that you feel a little more immediacy, a little less um, that I have the rest of the forever to do these oh and achieve my, my goals? Like, are you waking up with a little more passion to try to niche in on really getting down to the nitty gritty of what we're here for? I definitely, uh, you know, in the, la in the last few years, I've come to realize I want to leave some sort of worthwhile legacy. Yeah. You know what makes me feel great? When I go down to the Keys, and and Luke Luke has become one of the best oh, man. best wake skaters on the planet. Luke okay? is just for, the, incredible. for you guys listening. Luke but, is but just you, amazing. You know what he does? <laughs> yeah, the best guys. So he has these friends who are the, the best wake skaters in the world. Well, one of the guys had PTSD. Uh, like he'd had a really bad fall. So Luke's like, Dad, you got to work with this guy. So I give him all the heart math, and I t teach him, yeah. and I make him understand how the story is creating the anxiety and we have we go through all this time well guess where he is now he won the whole world championship again this year nice so nice and, and, and but to have my kids recommend me to yeah. their friends yeah yeah that's the best yeah you yeah know, then i know i'm making a difference yeah that's a great yeah. point that's so a that, good point yeah, huge that's awesome mm. man you have an incredible family <laughs> you do yeah, yeah pretty, we're, we're, <laughs> yeah. not by chance though not by chance. Good point. Well, when you made mention that, you know, the four of you would wake up and or at some point in the day, no, own them in pray the together, it was always in the morning, always in the morning, you and know, then we that? hold hands. Yeah. So that this went like this. So we, Barry <laughs> and I, we had an altar in our room where uh -huh. we'd sit down next uh -huh. to the altar. We would do the harmony and the kids would either be playing on the bed or on the floor. And then afterwards we say, come hold hands. Mm -hmm. So the four of us would mm -hmm. hold hands. Yeah. Now we'd have our prayer request. Yeah. So we go around the four and each of us say, oh, I, I pray for my friend so-and-so or I pray I have a good day today. And then at the end, we'd all have to look at each other. So I'd have to look at Barry and say, I love you. Mm -hmm. I'd have to look at Allie, I love you. Mm -hmm. And Luke, I love you. Mm -hmm. And they, they'd all do it. Mm -hmm. And then we'd 
break and we go on about our day. Yeah. And we did it for years, right? And looking back, I believe that foundation has been yeah. the key to the whole yeah. thing. And uh, yeah, but we, and then we'd have like a little family pile on hug, you know, and jump on the bed <laughs> or something. But it was, it, we were looking back, you know, it, it didn't seem that important then. But yeah. Now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, I don't know how much of that's going on these days, to be honest. How often do you let meet other people or families that are that are doing that type of rare. uh it's rare. Yeah. So that's that's amazing. That's yeah. that's incredible, right? I mean, oh, uh that would be a really cool that'd be a great course to come up with for you. I mean, not you're already doing that with your course, but you know, just some sort of like family training course. I like that. You know, one of the challenges with children is like just getting them involved and, and where they, I mean, it's not that hard because if they see you happy, they want to jump in and get, get involved in the fun. But sometimes, you know, if I, if I, I've always tried to not pressure my children to come to yoga because I remember when I got pressured to go to church as a kid, it almost repelled me from church. Mm -hmm. And so I've really tried to take this approach of like, if you guys want to come, you can, but there's no pressure, you know, and just let them flow in or out. But I like what you were mentioning in terms of like just inviting them in or like you guys would do the exercise first and it wasn't this force to like you're doing this right now whether you like it or not like you know and because it seems like it ha it could have that opposite effect well and, and it became a real special thing I, I always told barry you know even when we moved here we did it now yeah. Allie and luke they were 10 11 12 getting older yeah so it was hard but yeah. so you tell them hey you know come down breakfast is ready hold on hold on uh -huh. when you said come hold hands yeah it was like it was they just came they did it and it was never resistance it was, never and it resistance. was like just they knew yeah. that was a special time they knew it in their hearts and then we'd say and you know we never yeah. never had a parent teacher conference ever yeah. Yeah. for disciplinary yeah. reasons yeah. not one yeah all yeah. the years yeah yeah but when we were leaving the house we'd say make everyone's day better Mm. It's the only piece of mm. advice we'd give. Mm. <laughs> you know, just make one. everyone's day better. <laughs> and if they go out with that one piece of advice, chances mm. are they do okay. That's a really good one. I heard this yesterday, I think on the exact same note that someone said, uh, instead of thinking, what does the world owe me today? What can I offer? What, what do I have to offer to the world today? Right. Like what, instead of this, like, what am I going to get? Right. What am I going to get today? You know? Oh. So that's a big one. Flipping that on its head. And that's but one of the best things. What do ever. I have to offer? <laughs> yeah. yeah when, um, we, when we seek ourselves, we get the world. When we seek the world, we get nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Good point. That's amazing, John. Well, this has been a great opportunity. I feel like you've shared a lot of wisdom, oh, advice, and great stories. I, I don't know if you have a parting or closing offering to the listener. Uh, well. You know, uh, the, the only really parting thing is just to keep working on yourself, keep finding a way to be calm and happy on a daily basis and try different things, try different meditations, try different yogas, try something and find that thing that lights your fire. Yes. And, uh, and, and then if you'd like to join us at Unity of Jupiter, we have a really um, all my talks from last year on YouTube there. So you can go to Unity of Jupiter on YouTube. Very and cool. then all the ones coming up will be on YouTube. And we're only going to make those better and better. So it should get to be pretty good watching. That's awesome, John. You know, just to give you a little bit of kudos, I remember when you first started doing your harmony exercises on Facebook Live, I was very uh, nervous, shy about doing anything on the internet and especially doing something live. And I, I remember my thoughts when I saw you doing it, I was like, wow, John's really utilizing this technology and, you know, that's so cool. I, I feel so nervous doing that, but I feel like you pioneered it a little bit in terms of, I mean, obviously other people develop the technology for you to use or for us to use, but I, for me, it's getting easier to do things like this where I'm putting oh, myself yeah. out there, but I, I got inspired by you just doing that and just being willing to not have it be perfect. I remember one time you did one where I think you were paddle boarding or kayaking and you brought your phone out there with you somehow has cell service and you know, you're paddling the winds blowing, there's white caps and you're like doing the harmony exercise. And I was like, dude, this is so classic. I love right. it. It was a little rough, but I'll tell you what, uh, it, it was, it was commitment. Yeah. And, and, and yeah. uh, yeah, and you've become really good at it now. Well, and, thank you. And I think as, 
you know, both of us have matured a lot in the last 10 years yeah. and suddenly yeah. become a lot more confident in what we do and what we're teaching. And it's needed out there. Yeah. You yeah. Know? Yeah. But yeah. Worse man. than ever. I hear. Yeah. Well, thank you, John. Oh, well, it's great to so see you. Much. Let's do this again someday. You know and you we'll uh, yeah. go into more. Thank you, Todd. Thank you.